Good evening. You're taking a live look out over Denver tonight. Hopefully most of the snow at your house has melted along with that sunshine today. It has been a pattern around here lately. Snow on the weekend on those holiday weekends and plenty of traffic at the tunnels. You're looking at a shot uh, from it's live tonight up at the tunnels. There will be some safety metering if you're driving up there this weekend as they try to manage those crowds. So heads up. And the morning started out with a whole lot of snow out there. This was the scene in Glendale this morning. It was a slick and slushy drive, but thankfully not as bad as that wet and heavy stuff we got a few weeks ago. And some big changes could be on the way. Let's send things out to the Nine News backyard where Lauren Robinson joins us with a look ahead. That's right. We're going to see big changes in the form of warm weather. By the middle of the week, we're going to see these temperatures approaching the middle 60s. We're going to take baby steps toward that, though. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the snow totals we got last night and into early this morning. Snow Mass Village reported just over 10 inches of snow. We saw just over 7 inches in Manitou Springs, almost 6 inches in Array and Boulder, 5 inches reported in Aspen Springs and Mount Crested Butte, just under 5 inches in Louisville, just under 4.5 in Steamboat Springs and just over four in Golden Vale and Netherland. Denver International Airport reported just under two and a half inches and most of the Denver metropolitan area saw between one and three inches of snow. All of these areas falling within our expected snow totals. Now as we take a look at our HD Doppler radar, we're going to see a clear evening tonight, but temperatures will be very chilly in the teens in Denver tonight. Right now we're at 25 degrees, but with winds coming in from the south southwest at nine miles per hour, it does feel closer to 16 degrees on the skin. Definitely a night where if you do have to be outdoors, make sure you're bundled up tonight and into early tomorrow. But tomorrow afternoon, we will see sunny skies and more mild weather. We're going to watch for some light mountain snow, but our next system to hit Denver won't come toward until the middle of next week. So I'll have details on all of that just ahead in my full seven day forecast. Thank you, Lauren. Once again, a former funeral home operator in Colorado is accused of mishandling the bodies entrusted into his care. Denver police say 33 year old Miles Harford used to operate the Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services in Jefferson County. When he was evicted from a rental home earlier this month, investigators say they found cremated remains of at least 30 people in that house. Police say they also found the body of a 62 year old woman in a hearse in the backyard. Harford's facing charges for abuse of a corpse, forgery, and theft. He is not yet in custody. This is just the latest case involving accusations of misconduct against a funeral home operator. But the funeral industry in the state could soon see some new regulations. Yeah, state lawmakers now planning to introduce a bill requiring that people who do this kind of work have a license. Our Janelle Finch tells us about the bipartisan bills set to be presented in the coming weeks. Next week, Colorado lawmakers will present the first of two bills on operations in the funeral industry. We're going to introduce the uh, sunset bill to continue regulating funeral homes as a business entity. Republican Representative Matt Soper says this legislation isn't anything new, but the bill to follow is what would make state history. And this is um, the first time in 40 plus years that Colorado will be requiring licensure of those who work in the funeral home industry. Colorado is the only state that doesn't require licensure of the people who run these businesses, leaving the door open for accusations of inappropriate treatment of the deceased. The case in Denver this week is only the latest. On the western slope in Montrose, the owners of Sunset Mesa Funeral Home were sentenced to prison after they were accused of stealing and selling hundreds of bodies. In southern Colorado, Law enforcement recovered nearly 200 bodies from the Return to Nature funeral home in Penrose. Families thought their loved ones had been cremated or buried. And what is it in Colorado that says that we can be the place where criminals seem to think this is okay? I mean, it's, it's abuse of a corpse. Under new laws, funeral home directors, morticians, and crematorium operators would be required to be educated on and follow set industry standards. Operators will have to understand funeral home ethics, uh, the science of uh, decaying bodies. They'll have to uh, know how to you know, work with families better. Representative Soper says Coloradans would be saved from the heartbreak and headache some have endured in recent years. I hope by requiring licensure, we will never hear stories like Apollo or Return to Nature or Sunset Mesa, that those cases coming out of Denver, Penrose, and Montrose will be a thing of the past. That's our goal. 
Representative Soper says this legislation could be introduced in the next seven to 10 days following Wednesday's presentation of the Sunset Bill on funeral business operations. We will certainly be following both of those with so many high profile cases. Janelle, thank you. One of the most historic neighborhoods in Denver is once again filled with music this weekend. Yeah, the annual Jazz Roots series bringing smooth jazz to five points today, and we stopped by for a listen. It's a part of town called the Harlem of the West, a place where music lives within the bricks of these walls. So when you come down here and you listen to music, it actually sounds a little bit different, it sounds a little bit better than, what it, than it would in any other part of the city. Norman Harris owns Spangalang Brewery, one of six Denver businesses hosting free concerts this weekend and next as part of the annual Jazz Roots series, honoring this block's musical history. Yeah, you know, Five Points is affectionately known as the Harlem of the West, and that really pays honor to quite a few jazz musicians who, in between traveling from east to west, would actually stay in Denver. Um, they would perform downtown, but they actually weren't allowed to stay in hotels downtown. So a lot of the jazz clubs would feature some of the same performers, African-American jazz performers, and many of the different jazz clubs that were here in the Five Points. Doing um, these types of events over and over, it's a common theme that we hear from people that, wow, this is just a great atmosphere for what they're experiencing. And it's really because these bricks really hold so many stories from the past. And so um, what our job is as you know, the new leaders of this community is to keep that legacy moving forward. Some pretty amazing music there today. If you missed that jam session, it is not too late. Those bands will be back in action next Saturday from noon until 7. We have all of that information on our website, 9news.com. Today was the first chance on the slopes for a group of Coloradans and completely free. The Slide Through Sessions program is working to increase diversity in snow sports by lowering the barriers to access. Earlier this week, participants got fitted for skis, boots, and clothes ahead of today's event. Slide Through Sessions is a partnership between a local black ski club, Ski Noir 5280, and I-70 Things. Through the program, people were able to get everything they needed to ski and to snowboard again all for free, including those very expensive lift tickets and transportation. Today, they went to Loveland Ski Area. It was LA native Teresa Scales' third time ever on a snowboard, but her first time with this group. And now that I live in Denver, I'm like, this is the best place to learn how to actually do it, you know? And there's so many people who actually snowboard that I'm like, I can find a group and then just go up with them. It's like nothing, so I'm like, perfect. This is what I needed. This program is only two years old, but it's very popular. Every session has limited first come first serve spots and they keep a wait list.